Hi, hope you guys are all doing fantastic. Welcome to our YouTube channel. In this video, we'll have an image-based discussion related to superficial temporal artery, where we'll focus on its origin, its course, and its distribution along with its branches. I hope you guys are ready. So without any further delay, let's go ahead. So as you can see, this is the illustration of superficial temporal artery. I tried my level best to put an appropriate illustration on this whiteboard. So as the name itself indicates, it's present superficially. In fact, I can demonstrate that right now. Take your two or three fingers and then place them in front of the tragus of the ear. You can feel some pulsations. These pulsations are from superficial temporal artery. So it's located superficially and it is one of the two terminal branches of external carotid artery. In fact, of the two terminal branches of external carotid, superficial temporal is a smaller branch, whereas the other maxillary artery, which is also a terminal branch of external carotid, is larger comparatively. Superficial temporal artery arises from external carotid artery and then it ascends upwards behind the neck of the mandible or in front of auricle and then giving off various branches supplying or providing arterial supply to skin and muscles on the side of the face and scalp including parotid gland and temporomandibular joint right now let's look into the course and the various branches that superficial temporal artery has so as you can see Starting from, I've numbered various branches here for sake of, you know, easy communication. Number one here represents maxillary artery. It is one of the larger terminal branches of external carotid. And as you can see, it arises below the level of temporomandibular joint and then goes along either laterally or medially to lateral pterygoid muscle and ramifies in pterygopalatine fossa. We'll discuss about maxillary artery in detail in a separate video. Number two represents a superficial temporal artery. And then you have number three. They are nothing but parotid branches of superficial temporal artery. It supply parotid gland. And number four is anterior auricular branches. It supply external auditory meters and pinna. Number five represents transverse facial artery, which, as you can see, is it is located below the level of zygomatic arch and is covered by parotid gland and is going towards cheek. Number six represents zygomatic orbital branch. As you can see, it is above the level of zygomatic arch, going along the zygomatic arch towards the lateral margin of the orbit. Number seven represents middle temporal artery, middle temporal branch of superficial temporal artery. So this is located above the zygomatic arch and goes beneath temporalis muscle. And then we have finally two terminal branches of superficial temporal artery, which include anterior frontal branch and posterior parietal branch. This anterior frontal branch, it forms an anastomosis with its counterpart from the opposite side and also forms an anastomosis with supraorbital and supratrochlear branches of internal carotid artery. So here, interestingly, very importantly, you'll find communication between the branches of external carotid and internal carotid. When it comes to posterior parietal branch, it forms an anastomosis with its counterpart from the opposite side and also forms an anastomosis with occipital artery and posterior auricular artery, which are branches of external carotid artery. Right? So this is in brief about the branches and the distribution of superficial temporal artery. So before we conclude, to summarize all that we have discussed so far, superficial temporal artery is one of the terminal branches of external carotid artery arises within the substance of parotid gland and ascends upwards along with auriculotemporal nerve and it is present so superficially that you can feel its pulsations in front of the tragus and it gives off branches which provide arterial supply to skin, muscles of face and scalp including parotid gland and temporomandibular joint and it has various branches as we discussed just now. It includes parotid branch, anterior auricular branch, transverse facial branch, zygomatic orbital branch, middle temporal branch, and then two terminal branches that is anterior frontal and posterior parietal branches. And interestingly, anterior frontal forms an anastomosis with branches of internal carotid. So there is a communication between the branches of external and internal carotid here, right? One of the best ways to remember any kind of artery or know that you are going through in anatomy is to practice those illustrations and to form a mental picture 
that is how you can easily recollect any kind of information related to that particular illustration you know very effortless manner right to trust the process practice the illustrations and form a mental image i hope it's clear and if you have any further queries or you need any further assistance you can always get back through mail at proud to be dentist at gmail.com 24 by 7 so wish you all the best love you all